Welcome back, guys. I am your host, Gabe, from the Search for Tiki, and it is another night of 13 Nights at Tiki Frights. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're super excited to talk to Derek Yaniger, um, who, if you don't know him by his name, you've probably seen his art. He does art for all kinds of events around the country, including Tiki Oasis, the world's largest tiki gathering in San Diego and Arizona, um, and Dragon Con. Uh, we are sponsored by Plantation Rum. So please do check out our cocktails on uh, 13 nights at tiki frights.com. And with that said, guys, I want to get right into it and talk to, to Derek. So let's see if we can get him in here. There he is. Oh, this stuff is dangerous. Be He's careful. got that good, good stuff. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> How are you doing, Gabe? I'm doing well. How's Derek doing? Uh, Derek's groovy at the movie, man. I'm, I'm all good. It's good to be chatting with another East Coaster. Hey, that's right. We got there's a lot of West Coast tiki, but us East Coasters, we got to stick together. East Coast night. <laughs> yeah, we got to man. They're, they outnumber us, dude. I can't believe I missed you. So like, I I saw you at Inu Haley. Uh, yeah. Yep. We had uh, Jonathan Chaffin, one of the organizers, on the show earlier this week. Yep. Uh, but it it sounds like you were here fairly recently for another event in New England. Oh yeah, yeah. The New England shakeup. The New England Shakeup. Yeah. It's a I don't know how I missed it, but what is the New England Shakeup? New England Shakeup is a hoot and a holler. Um, it's mostly a rockabilly show. It's a big music show, fashion, music, but mostly music. Uh, lots of rockabilly bands, lots of uh, Western swing, you know, kind of grand old Opry, like come back to life kind of thing, you know? Yeah. It's a blast, man. It's really fun, you know? So, uh yeah, they invited me out to be one of the featured artists. Um, so, yeah, I went and had a little booth set up and had some paintings, had a little gallery show, and I just had a blast. And actually, my daughter, who lives in New York, came down and hung out with me for the show, which we've never done that before. So Nice. Yes, man. We had so much fun. That must put a different perspective on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all the big wigs. It's all the heavy hitters in the rockabilly world, like Deke Dickerson, uh, Dave Stuckey, Big Sandy, and the Fly Right Boys, you know, so... All the good ones. It was a good time. I know. That's my job. That's my Dude, job. You did it. You, you killed the nine to five. I know. My job. How would you do it? How does it feel for all of us stuck in the grind? I, well, is this guy in a, with horns and a red suit came to me one day and he said, <laughs> How would you like? And I said, Sure. I'll we'll give you whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now I'm very, very fortunate. We lost Derek. We're going to get Derek back in here. Guys, stay tuned. We will have Derek back on in just a second. Um, while you guys think. Hey, you're back. Ah, shoot. It looks like I got a good internet. Going? I don't know. You came back real quick. I was just going to say we're going to do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway early. Okay, go. It's going to fill the space your absence when you left us stranded. Give us giveaway. Let's, let's do a giveaway. Free dinner. We're going to kick it off right in the beginning. A free, a free foot a rub. From creep Derek. off. Free foot rub. Hey, you know what? If you want to raise the stakes, free foot rub from Derek Anniger. Come on, my house. That's what you get. You get the, the first question right. You get a free foot rub from Derek Anniger. You also get a pin, creep on, on creeping on, uh, and a swizzle stick from the Black Lagoon Room. Oh, I love the Black Lagoon Room. I shouldn't have said foot rub. I should have held out for something. <laughs> well, the thing is, with the foot rub, they got to come to you, right? <laughs> That's you're true. not you're not going to fly anywhere to get That's someone a foot rub, ball. but they got to hunt you down. <laughs> kind of a big deal over here. So the way this works is the first person to get the question right in the comments will get a pin, a swizzle stick from the Black Lagoon Room, and if you're willing to travel, uh, a free foot rub from Derek Anniger. <laughs> Derek uh, has done the art for Tiki Oasis many, many years. He's done their posters. Um, Tiki Oasis in San Diego uh, this year had a theme, as it usually does. Um, so what was the theme of Tiki Oasis uh, in 2022, their San Diego event that Derek did a poster for? First person to get the answer correct in the comments will get to I, take one. I can't answer. I, I'm not allowed, right? You're not allowed. Uh, you can't give yourself a foot rub, Derek. It's all rigged. It's all rigged. <laughs> but before we get talking about the the events and all the arts you've done, um, yep. usually we save the mugs for last. But, dude, 
I gotta say, this is a contender. The witch doctor for a uh, mug of the year. Everybody's talking about it. It's the witch doctor. You gotta have it. It's it might be sold out everywhere. I'm not even sure. I know it's on the eBay's. eBay's. And uh, yeah, so this uh, one of our sponsors is is uh, Tiki Farm Holden, the hardest working guy in Tiki, and the the friends yes. of Tiki Farm. Um, yes. They knocked it out of the park with this, obviously, with your illustrations. Is this was the character created just for this mug, or did he yes. exist in your? Yes. Mind? Well, I had a bunch of sketches. I had some old sketches. I found this old weird voodoo album, and on the back it had a cartoon witch doctor, and. Um, so he was kind of rolling around in my coconut for a long time. And so then when it was time to design mugs, he just kind of spilled out. And so I figured we'd go with that. And Holden dug it. So we did it. Yeah. It looks so good, dude. Nice, man. It's fun. The, the, the know, wipe and the... so good. They gotten so good at the coloring, at the hand painting. It's crazy how good it is now, how tight it it's is. Spot on. And you got the back. Yeah. You got to show the back. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They look Where good. Go? Really really swell but the way they do that is amazing and the, some of the early mugs that i had hand painted i wasn't that happy with but man they got it figured out now not anymore it's amazing what 20 years will do for yeah. ceramic cocktail mugs <laughs> we did get the correct answer um the first person guys keep in mind it's based on your network connection so depending on when you send your message it, it's it's who shows up on my screen first so don't send me ha ha hate mail send it to Derek Ganniger. all hey. right hey. and uh Congratulations to uh, That's not fair. I'm Coach Nate LSQ. You have won a uh, a foot rub from Derek Anniger along with some black looking <laughs> rum pins. And uh, everyone else, uh, you can send Derek your hate mail. There you go. Won't be there the first time. Won't be the first time. Now nah, we're kind of used to that, right? Yeah. Kind of used to that. But yeah, yeah, dude, this mug was great. And you've got another mug uh, with Tiki Farm that I believe is still available. I'm going to see if I can pull up a photo here. Of it real quick. Oh, you got it right there. Yeah. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. The Island Beat. And, so, and the Island Beat and the Island Life. I think that's what they're called. I've got a. Let's do this. So I found this. Hey, there. Yeah. And this looks somewhat familiar to that what? mug. Doesn't it? Where did he Doesn't get it? That That's that? a what? I mean, look yeah. at that. That, yeah. that girl, oh. that tiki. So, and, dude, uh, tell me tell me what's going on here. At DerekArt.com. Usually what we do is I'll grab some mugs. I get some sample mugs from Holden. And then I'll buy some mugs, you know. And um, and then I'll do a release at Derek Art, you know. And I try to make it kind of special and kind of different from, from the normal release at Tiki Farm. So I'm making I'm making prints of the artwork that 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 inspired this, and then prints of the artwork that inspired this, and then when you buy the mug, you're gonna get a free print. So that's what. Wow. That's what. <laughs> and every mug comes with a foot rub. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, what rub? <laughs> which came first? Back pedal. Back pedal. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the art or the mug? The art. Well, actually, there is a print. Uh, that I had put out called Jungle Jam Session is very, very similar to this one. And so we, Holden and I had talked about doing a relief style mug, which I love because as a 2D artist, because let's face it, I'm a 2D artist. I just am. I'm, I'm not that deep. You say that like it's less. <laughs> well, it's not a less. You only handle 2Ds. I can't handle <laughs> too many Ds. So, so I, uh, I, I love doing this because it really echoes. It shows my work. It really looks like my art. So I like it when that happens. So I, I like the release. I, so yeah. I have seen, um, so I'll pull up this art here again. I have seen oftentimes when people do art like this, uh, typically what it is translated to is uh, like a decal. They'll do like a, a literally a printed fired on decal around the mug. Mm -hmm. And your newest mugs are not that way at all. They are, are uh, completely... Carved in. Uh, was that one of Tiki Farm sculptors that worked their magic on I'm your 2D? Sure which, I'm not sure which cat did that one. Um, I, That's some cool I, cat. No, some cool cat knew what he was doing. No, those guys saved me all the time because I mean, I again, I'm a 2D artist, and I I give them 
turnarounds and I give them as much information as I my pea brain. Um, but they take it and do wonders with it, you know. And so I've, I'm really impressed with what they're they're cranking out. Their stuff's getting tighter and tighter and better and better every year. So it looks so good. Pleasure to is work. It, with them. Is it, it? It seems like maybe there could be more of those. Like a continuing more series. I, I would yeah. love to do some more of those. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. next week I need to need to email Holden and tell him I'm doing this. I'm gonna spend a, like just a chunk of time just designing a bunch of new mugs for next year. Um, I've been juggling too many flaming chainsaws lately. So I <laughs> haven't been able to get on any new designs. So finally going to steal some time next week to, uh, to crank out. And that's my, that's, that's a joy to me, man. Just standing there at the drawing table with the pencil and just, I just love it, man. That's a thrill, man. I love it. I love, I still get a huge kick out of a pad of paper with nothing on it open up a brand new pad of paper and you got a pencil in your hand. I mean, the possibilities are endless. It's very endless, <laughs> but it's really true. It's very exciting. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, they're not all winners, but uh, you never know what'll, what'll happen. So I love that. Lately, they've been knocking them out of the park, not just you, but uh, Tiki Farm in general with a lot of yeah. the great, great artists, Tom, Big Toe, Laura. Um, Big Toe. Yeah. Um, Big Toe. Do you remember what your first mug was? You got to go way yeah. back, Derek. Yeah. Wait for me. Wait for me. I'm pretty sure it was this one, which was Tiki Farm. I worked for Monk, Monk, Monk Tiki, Monk Tiki. Did a couple of mugs with them, but this one, which was for Tiki Oasis 5. Five? Damn, five. Yeah, <laughs> Tiki Oasis 5. I don't even know what year that was. But it was a, you know, a one-eyed Moai. One-eyed Moai. He's got the little gold earring there and stuff. So I think that was the first. I think that's the first one. I'm pretty sure. So who swindled you into making mugs? Who swindled me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I How'd so you get talked into it? Uh, I met Holden. I went to, to, to Tiki Oasis. I waited because I've done, like you said, I've done the artwork for Tiki Oasis 20 plus years, 20, 21 years, I think. It's either 20 or 21. Uh, um, and so I waited a long time before I went out to San Diego because I thought they were all going to laugh at me. They're going to push you down in the mud and laugh at you. You know, I <laughs> was kind of terrified. So I went and everybody was just so sweet and accepting. And I made lifelong friends, you know, that very first trip um, and really clicked with Holden and, uh, and so we just started collaborating and started doing stuff. And so uh, he's a pleasure to work with, man. He lets me do my own thing. And uh, it's, it's, it's a successful relationship. It's been going on quite a while. So, yeah. There's got to be a certain amount of trust there. Yeah. You know, yeah for you to let someone take your art and turn it into a product that's going to be, you know, you there know, is. and for Holden as well. Yes, I, uh, I have... Uh, yeah, I was a lot. I was a lot more easygoing than I was than I am now. I'm a little more particular about the mugs, and so poor Holden, I put him through a little more hell than I used to, nitpicking and going, "Hey, I like this." And da, 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 da. I'm always thrilled, and, it's a, and I respect the man like you wouldn't believe, you know. But uh, but I'm a little more particular, and like we discussed earlier, the techniques have gotten better, and they're just gotten better at the painting and the sculpts and the whole thing. So so and the uh, colors, the glazes. Yeah. I'm stoked to have a blue mug. As you can tell from the mugs behind me, I collect a lot of brown mugs. So it's always a nice to have something that pops. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I like that one. I think there's a reissue of the of that one in a green, kind of a yellow green color. Ooh, second edition. Would be nice. Could Mark my calendars. Um, I got some of your so art. So we talked about a little bit here. Uh, hey, there you go. Calypso. To the tropics. Yep. Calypso. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting doing artwork for, for auto, uh, because I never know what themes, I mean, he comes, he comes at me with some themes some years. I'm like, what? Like the new wave theme was, a, was, a, was a noodle scratcher. I was like, catch the new wave. Doing? Yeah. Uh, but it's always something different, you know, and it's thrilling. I like, I kind of like having to, you know, do a little research and a little digging and make it happen. Um, but uh, and, and the way I do the artwork, I mean, since the kind of theme of this thing is the event art that I do, uh, uh, for when I do stuff for him, I give him all the elements separate 
and together. I put them together for the show print and then I give him separate elements so he can use them for signage or he can use them in, you know, to advertise or put them where. See, I was wondering about this because like, if you go to Tiki Oasis, there's, you'll, you'll be getting like cocktails somewhere and there'll be like, maybe this image is on one of the cocktail booths. And then, yeah. you know, when you go to like a, maybe a photo session, you got the, the Tiki over here. Yeah. He so had like the, the, I'm sorry. He had the Calypso girl, like it, like, cut out of like the, the foam board stuff, like six feet tall, seven feet tall, I'm all over the place. So it's kind of cool to go and see your art everywhere. And giant. Satisfying. Yeah, it is. It's nice. Um, do you, uh, so how does this like process start? Do you start with sketches and then you, you change it over to like an iPad or? Yeah, I don't work on any iPads. I do as much as possible by hand just because I'm a dinosaur. I mean, that's just the way I've always done it. So why change now, right? So uh, so no, everything starts pencil on paper and I get and I draw and I redraw and I get a really, really tight pencil. I send the client that tight pencil and then I get my approval. And then I and then I do I take that and I do color tests and play with color until I get it figured out. Um, and then my line work, I will I do all that by hand and then I scan it in and I build it in the computer because I have to because the screen printer is going to want colors on separate layers and, you know, and, and clients always want digital art. You know, so so I'm kind of forced to do that, which is fine. I don't mind. Doing it, but uh, but I do as much as I can by hand. But it's really everything is really figured out in the drawing. My my pencils are tighter than a duck's ass. I mean, that. <laughs> I, I I really work out all the details. I don't want any surprises. So when it comes time to making the art, it's like the Ford factory. <laughs> and crap is coming down the conveyor belt and I just do, I know what to do, you know, but I, I, I do all my thinking and all my designing and my balance of, of images and all that stuff in the, in the initial pencil stage. How do you keep your, cause you do, you sell original art. Oftentimes when you're, you're vending, you do these sketches. Um, I got some of them here that you posted today, actually. Um, how do you keep these so clean, dude? Is it just years of experience? Yeah. I used to do, I got really good. I got really good with pens uh, during my Marvel years back in the, late eighties, early nineties, I did a bunch of stuff for Marvel and I did, I did pencils and inks, but when I was doing my inks and you got to crank that stuff out, um, I got really good and I got really steady with my hand. And so, so when I'm doing those, those things, and it's tough too, cause that, that paper that I work on, it's a thick paper and it kind of can bleed and stuff, but, but, you know, you see my line work, how it's kind of scratchy and bleedy, you know, that blotty line. Um, it lends itself. Hey, look at you. Look at, look at that. You look at that. Technology. <laughs> Technology, Derek. Damn. Uh, we can zoom in and see all your imperfections. <laughs> so uh, so that is very forgiving, that line. But I'm just, I just do a real steady. And when I do my color, I use brush tip markers. And then you can, you just depending on how hard you push down on that thing, you can get some really sharp lines. So, uh I don't know. It's just the way I like it. I want it to be as tight as I can get it. I love um, this one right here. Panic at the, Panic at the Luau. This has got to be my favorite one that I've seen recently. I should, yeah, I should turn that into a print, I think. Dude, you have to. Yeah, it's you got to go all in on Panic at the Luau. I it just want to see kind of body cool. parts everywhere. Yeah, it could be kind of cool to do a really, really long piece, you know, do it as a, maybe a painting and then as a print with just body parts and people eating each other. That could be kind of fun. I'd take a mug too. Hey. Now, see, now that I've seen what you can do, you can just take oh. these illustrations and pop them into these murals. Yeah. You know, panic at the Luau mug. That could be. You got at least one sale. People Gee. in the comments, let us know if you want to panic at the Luau mug. If I do that, do I have to cut you in? I mean, this is your illustration. I'm just telling you, you know, to take it. So no, I would say no. This is all you. And we got one more here. Care for a bite. Oh yeah, there's a print of that one. It's different, but the same sort of that's available at DerekArt.com. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, when you are are vending, so you bring a whole bunch of stuff with you. Your <laughs> plantation wrong. Another shameless plug. I don't know nothing about that. Yes. Um, and you can find it on DerekArt.com. Not the plantation realm, unfortunately. No. But the prints. 
I'm not sharing that. Mm. Yes, um, yeah, it's tons of prints and books and mugs and acrylographs and all kinds of nutty stuff. And always. How do you know, like quantities, what to bring? Oh, when I do shows, I don't. I never know. You don't. <laughs> I've done Dragon Con, which is the big, big, big con here in Atlanta. Um, I do that show every year. And I've done that so many times, I kind of have a good feel for it. Um, but like when I went out to New England, it was really weird, man. And it's funny, but as long as I've been doing this and as much success, I guess, as I've had, I still don't feel like so many times I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I really don't. And so when I was going out to the New, the New England show, which is really, again, a rockabilly, Western swing kind of show. And I love that kind of stuff. I love all things retro. I mean, that's just every anything retro like that I, I dig. Um, but I didn't know what kind of stuff to bring. And I also didn't know what kind of reception I was going to get. Like, do these people even know? I, I feel confident in the tiki world because I've been doing that for so damn long. Yep. That I'm not as worried. But when going into a new world like that, I'm like, oh, this is I was terrified, but everybody was just so nice and everybody knew and everybody's like, I follow you on Instagram. And, you know, so I was, ah, fuck it. so it was really satisfying. It really made me feel good that, okay, okay, okay. But, uh, but no, I wing it. I don't, I don't, I never know, you know, and, and it's very frustrating when you sell out of something, you're like, ah, I hate, I hate I that. wish I had more of that. Yeah. What, yeah. You, you know, you have never know. And then I never know from show to show some shows, a print goes crazy and I sell tons of them. And then the next to show it doesn't, it just sits there and looks at me. So, you know, who knows? I, I had so much fun at any Haley. I have to say you had these books of all your, so you had your prints and then you had books of like the original art and stuff and you could flip through them. And I had a blast just flipping, flipping through them. Yeah. That's fun. It's, it's fun seeing all the different stuff that you come up with. Thank you. And that brain of yours, Derek rotted brain <laughs> i've got some uh so dragon con hey, there's dragon dragon. Con. hey. i'm glad yeah. you got some of your own images and stuff because i maybe i didn't send you enough i didn't know oh i can just steal from your website no <laughs> <laughs> yeah those yeah. these are fun to do yeah, this is your neck of the woods right so you're in atlanta georgia that's in atlanta yeah downtown yeah i'm i'm 10 minutes away yeah yeah these are fun to do um yeah, they. I, I did a. I did a thing. A design form years ago, and it took off. People really dug it. T-shirt design, and it sold out. So they were like, "Hey, let's do some more." And so, yeah, I, it's kind of fun to do my take on it, you know, and without fear of being sued by Marvel or DC. <laughs> <laughs> Are you giving like a free pass for anyone that's uh, like participating at the? Yeah, if oh. as long as it's used to advertise the comic convention, you know, like that, then it's okay. I don't know. Somebody probably. That Marvel is, disagree. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's sneaky in. Yet, so I'm I'm assuming it's okay until somebody yeah. knocks on the door. Well, you used to work for Marvel, right? I did. Yeah. What did you do during your time at Marvel? Was it uh, like comic books or advertisements or comic books? Yeah. Uh I worked on uh Toxic Crusaders, which was the Toxic Avenger thing. I worked on Hellraiser, uh Hellstorm, uh Nightbreed, a lot of Clive Barker stuff in the early days. And then I did Web of Spider-Man. Uh, 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 um, I did, uh, oh, the, the, the Transformers, Generation 2. Uh, I, I did those. Um, it was good, though, but I wasn't, it did not come natural to me. I had to work my ass off to keep up. I really was tough. Because, you know, you look at my style now compared to drawing the Marvel way, Um I, you know, I, I, I had to, I, I, it didn't, did not come natural to me, you know? So, which is why I ended up where I am now. Cause this is what I love. And this is that style is what really flows out of me, you know? Um, yeah. And I did it, I think just cause I, as a child, I dreamed of working for Marvel. I wanted to work for Marvel ever since I can remember, you know? So when I finally got the opportunity, I took it. So, but I, I did it for about five years and then I just said, I don't, I don't want to no. do it. I've already checked that box. I'm ready to move on to the next uh, yeah. next chapter. I did the same thing with Cartoon Network because right after that, I segued into Cartoon Network, which back in the 90s, early 90s-ish, there was a lot more stuff being done in Atlanta. There's still a lot done. but um, So I did a lot of Cartoon Network stuff. Did that for about four years, and the same thing happened. I got tired of it and did, didn't want to do it anymore because – 
I, it, for years, I was doing stuff that was other people's property. You know, yeah. I felt like a hired wrist. I felt like I wasn't doing me. I mean, I was doing other people's property. It just, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't do it for me. It did not flip my switches. So I, uh, that's around when, around 2000, I said, screw it. I'm going to do, cause in my, in my free time, I was doing all these paintings for friends, you know, for birthdays and stuff and, and really honing this retro style and studying it and trying to figure out what makes retro retro and doing it but I, I i wasn't showing most of it to people you know and so around 2000 i said screw it this is what i want to do and i threw put all my eggs just like they tell you put all your eggs in one basket because that's the smart thing to do so i put them all in the same damn basket and luckily i haven't dropped the basket yet so uh and uh i, I you know it kind of slowly took off it certainly wasn't overnight but uh but it's it it makes me happy, you know? So yeah. you know, I, I'm dancing, beat my own bongos, you know? For people that kind of, you know, are considering doing the same thing, you know, a lot of people in Tiki are super passionate about art. Does it, does it get uh, maybe a little easier over time? Like a snowball effect or is it, as just, far you got to be at the top of your game. As far as workload or as far as any of it yeah yeah just in I, I guess in terms of you know like brand recognition and i mean when you're first starting out it's hard because yeah. like yeah. nobody knows who you are and yeah. yeah no i no longer have to go looking for work and i haven't had to do that in quite a while which is which is nice um i you know i get people wanting commission stuff all the time you know most of the time it's somebody who wants a, 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 a drawing of them and their 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 cat for their blog or something so it's a lot of stuff and i'm like i don't know if i want to you know i it's got to be something that interests me or is exciting you know um so i get a lot of that but i don't so i kind of get to just kind of go through and pick and choose what i want to do and then you know creating my own art prints for the website and mug designs for holden and all that stuff is just is me i have total control over all of that um so I think that was kind of the dream when I was growing up and I wanted to be an artist was to have control over what I do and the, the art I, I produce, you know, and I finally have gotten there. And that's, that's a good thing. It's so exciting, dude. And I, I love seeing your art. Um, every time I go to, you know, one of these events like Tiki Oasis and I just see your art everywhere. It's like, wow. Were you at the first Tiki Oasis? At the first Tiki Oasis? No, no, no. It, it no. Just, this year i was in probably elementary school <laughs> no the past the last one not the last one no but i went the well i went to arizona and then i went to the san diego the year before um actually we can do you mentioned a couple of the other so we looked at uh trip to the tropics but i went to this one there you go um this one was great i don't even what is it just escape to tiki oasis was the theme this was uh after the pandemic right yeah. so we kind of missed a year yeah well we were going to do a big 20th anniversary celebration you know um and i was going to come down and we were going to have like an exhibit of all the old all the prints i'd done in the past and artwork and you know and it was going to be a big hoo-ha you know and and then you know covid so wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it didn't happen so this was kind of they were like i think they were just kind of like let's we're kind of feel like we're starting over almost and so there wasn't a necessarily a theme it was just it was just we're everybody. doing this again we actually get to see each other and that was enough yeah leave your houses yeah come, come people were it. so excited to to do that and then um 2019 this is, I think, this is the one you're talking about before, right? Catch the new wave. Which is so funny. <laughs> you got this tiki wearing the uh, yes, the glasses. That's so good. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites. I the tiki that. Oasis posters that you've done. Yeah, I love it. This one is so good. The it's got because the, box. the guy standing on the box is my favorite part. The guy standing on the box. Oh, right here. Because yeah. he's because he's shorter than she is, or like not. the Tom Cruise kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, we were just talking to Sven about how significant Hollywood was, you know, to yeah. Tiki. Sven, next time you see and, that, uh, give him a big old smoochie for me. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm not going to do that. 
<laughs> nice try, though. It'll be all right. Nice try. Well, you I got this. Um... I got a good Sven story. Okay, I'm always so, down for Sven story. He uh, he. I don't I don't know if I have the book. Doesn't matter. He uh, you know was doing his books, and you could like contact him and, and ask him to sign, personalize it to you. So I wrote some stupid thing about about Derek. All hail Derek. Kneel before Almighty Derek. He is a God among men, and all that wrote all this crazy crap and said, "All hail Derek!" And then Sven, you know, I said, "Just." And so he was like, "Okay." So he wrote, "Oh no!" Big out and signed it, Sven. And I'm like, "Yes." And I show it to everybody that'll look, that'll listen. Look everybody what Sven says. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he wrote the Book of Tiki, and he says, "All hail Derek Anager." <laughs> exactly. No, it's all hail Sven. That cat. We got this lady getting uh, getting eaten by a shark, I guess, and then yeah. we got the yeah age. Elvis. That's like so, a blue Hawaii reference there, and this other one is some she gods or she she's tiki gods of the she something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. You got the little director guy here yelling, something's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Anything that lives in that world, anything that lives in that retro world, I mean, I just, I, I love it. Man. Spoof? Yeah, I just love it because you get the clothes and the, you know, the beret and the mega horn or whatever it's called. It's always fun. This, this one. This one. I think this is the last Tiki Oasis poster I grabbed, but we had to show this one because it's 13 Nights of Tiki Frights. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Is this just, like your dream poster? Yeah, this was fun. Tiki Hell Yeah. Yeah. Party on Monster Island. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun one. Oh, it's good. It's fun, man. I see this stuff and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know that you did good stuff when you see your own stuff and you're not like, oh God. It's like, yeah, yeah. I did that. <laughs> if I look at older stuff, the stuff I did the first five or so years, I kind of cringe a little bit. Do you? I, yeah, why did I do that? What was I thinking? I thought that looked good. I, I, there's a lot of that. I think that's common among artists, though, because your favorite piece is always the last piece you just finished, you know? So, yeah. So over time, you're like, uh, and then you evolve. I and probably would have changed this. Different. I would have changed that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a reoccurring characters? I do not. I do not. Is uh, that intentional? Yeah, I guess because it never was that never was the thing to really come up with characters or come up with a thing that would that would you know what I mean? No, yeah, I, I don't know why I ne never thought to do that. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, you know, my my drunks, yeah. a lot of a lot of <laughs> drunks that I've done over the years that are all very similar, but you know, different noses, you know, but uh. But no, no recurring characters. Everything is different. I try to do a new thing each time. Slipping in. Slipping in. Speaking of drunks, I love this one. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> Looking so angry. Mm -hmm. And um, well, the other thing I'm trying to do, one of my favorites. Another thing I'm trying to do, and it's funny because I'm trying to tell little stories. I'm trying to tell little stories. And I'm not, you know. It's just simple little things like something just happened, you know. Um, but doing that in one frame, it's tricky because it's it's usually the shot is usually after the action or after it happened, you know. But you want to sell it to people and you want them to get it quickly. So it's got to be simple and it's got to be quick. But I'm always trying to work little gags like that into my work, like little silly things like the slipping in where the birds singing because the sun's coming up because this guy's been out all night and you know just little things that kind of sell it you know uh but humor is a big big part of what i do i love love working humor into it humor. where did that uh where do you think that that came from like were you reading the comics like sunday newspapers growing up that's how i taught myself to draw was copying the sunday funnies the comics, you know, Dagwood and Blondie and Hagar the Horrible and all the, I would, and I would copy those things and I would draw them. And then I, I started out tracing them and then I'd learned how to draw them on my own and became, you know, proficient at doing that, you know, and that's, that's really where I learned all those old cartoon tricks, you know, how to show somebody's drunk with this 
stars and the swirl over his head and the tongue sticking out and the, you know, all those little kitschy things that you saw in Bullwinkle and Pink Panther cartoons and all that, you know, it's all that stuff I soaked up when I was a little crumb snatcher. And then I, I bring it all back out it all just falling back out. But that's, that's where all that comes from. Yeah. And then you got into the comic books and then it was kind of history from there. But with the comics, you get multiple strips. Yes. And you, you, you oftentimes only get one. Yes. Yes. I had when I was at uh, when I, I went to school at uh, UGA, uh, University of Georgia in Athens uh, here in, here in, in Georgia. Um, and in the, the school newspaper, which was four days a week, I had a, a comic strip called Brouhaha and I would do it. And it was a single frame. And so I think I kind of learned I, I got good at that whole thing by being forced four times a week to crank out these little these cartoons, you know, to put in the paper um, and single panel. And, you you know, you got to kind of tell the story in a quick, simple the setup and the punchline all in one. I'll be right there. And one simple thing that people get, you know, and, and you don't want people reading the punchline before the setup. So now you're looking at, you know, where's the eye going to go? I have a uh, a piece here that I love. Uh, Lay it on me, Daddy O. Stories. It's one of your. I think they're called acrylographs. Acrylographs. Yes. Acrylographs. So we got these. Uh, I'm going the wrong way here. We got some mermaids here, and this little scuba diving dude. And then I can only imagine. I'm assuming that's his wife. Wife, <laughs> less than terrible wife, pulling him away from the mermaids. Yeah, look at her face. She is not happy. Yeah. No. He's, I love uh, and I love that in the, in the little center area, he's in heaven. I mean, look at all these these beautiful mermaids and the lipstick on his mask. You know, again, that's the way you say. You just that lipstick on his mask tells you this girl just kissed that guy right on the mask. You know the story yeah. just from that. Just that little bit there tells you everything. And I, I think you see all, him, and then yeah. you see the beautiful mermaids, and you're like, wait, why is he sad? Like he should be happy. He's with the mermaids, and then you kind of like go up and see. <laughs> Yeah, and he didn't get the jewels. See, the wife sent him down to get the jewels, but he didn't get the jewels because he got busy with the mermaids, and she got restless. And and the mer and of course the the jewels are guarded by an angry octopus. So boom, there's a lot going on in that one. And all of this is done on different layers. Yes, yes. Where did this idea of the acrylograph come from? Um, I. Uh, I was working and still am working with a business partner. He's basically Stuart Sandler, who, who came up with Font Diner. He's the guy, of, he's of Font Diner fame. He and I started a partnership years ago, you know, and basically, you know, he's, he's, he's at DerekArt.com. He's in charge of filling the orders, you know, so it really frees me up to just make art. He gets the prints printed he gets, and he fulfills the orders. Um, so it's a great relationship and it's, worked really well for for both of us i think over the years but he and i were trying to figure out ways to make 2d art more you know um and i was i was inspired by there's a, a fine artist named robert Rauschenberg who did these massive massive pieces and he had done some of that kind of stuff and so we started playing around with that idea and in the beginning we were screen printing these things on acrylic sheets of acrylic but it it was really a pain in the ass. It really was. And it didn't last very long. And so, but now there's a process where you can digitally print on wood, on metal, on plat, on acrylic. Um, and so we kind of figured out a way to make this work and make it afford where we could keep the prices affordable. And, you know, and we made a little bit of money off of them. And, and so that's, that's where that came from. And so we figured out how to do it. It almost reminds me of the uh, like the multiplane cameras, like the the vintage yeah. Disney Snow White. You yeah. know, you'd see yeah. the animators they draw like the background, which would be super detailed, and then just like yeah. that's, that's exactly stuff that's layered right. on top. And very hard to do because it it, it, it it hurts your brain. I mean, it really makes because you're trying to visualize this thing as you're putting it together, and you don't have it in 3D. You just have layers on top of layers, and it's real hard to keep that balance and keep it going and make it work without, you know, it being too much, you know, you don't want it to be too busy, but you know, whatever. Yeah. And you have to focus on where things are going, but you know, Derek, you said you were not a three-dimensional artist. You said you were a two-dimensional artist. And that's true. That's, 
That's three layers of two-dimensional art. This counts, buddy. <laughs> Close enough, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm glad you like that, man. I, I love doing those. Those are fun. I have, uh, so I got your website pulled up for another shameless plug. You got these acrylographs right here. And obviously oh, yeah. we're 13 nights of Tiki Frights. Uh, but this one, I'm, I'm debating pulling the trigger. So guys, don't buy them all. But the, uh, the, this one. the Spook Shack. I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. What is going on with that guy? Yeah, there's a lot going on in that one too. Yeah. I love these. These are fun to do. Maybe I had these um I had these growing up as a kid. Uh it was this I think it was like in a Martha Stewart magazine or something. And it was a haunted house kind of similar to this. And then all the colors were gone. And as a family we would all sit down and you'd get your like your colored pencils and whatever and you would color in you know, just uh, just a haunted house, and everybody's would come out a different way. Yeah, just saying. If you ever wanted to do a haunted house coloring page for me, you know, people I'd want colors <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. People want me to do coloring books are very popular. I'm thinking. Um, problem is, is that most of my stuff isn't outlined in black, which is one of the ways I get that retro look. Is mm -hmm. I use the black where I need it. Otherwise, color defines the form, you know, kind of a thing. So so I don't have a lot of black and white line work. I just don't. So I'd have to redraw everything or do auto tracing, which I tried, which is terrible. So that sounds like work. And also, you don't make any money off of coloring books. Yeah, that's true. Oh, he's, he's greedy, that greedy bastard. <laughs> don't get it for the money. I thought you were here for the art. Ah, screw that. Just burn this interview to the ground. Screw that. You're fired. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, you have done other books, though, like this wanna fantastically see. inappropriate and want to see my doodle. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with that? Hmm. Want to see my doodle. Yes. I don't that know. That's, just, that's a collection of all those sketches that we were showing earlier. I've always got a sketch pad if I'm, I'm waiting at the DMV or waiting to get a haircut. I've always got pencils and, and pens and I'm just, you know, if I'm sitting in the car, like when my kids were, were younger and I'd pick them up at carpool. I'd sit there. So I'm always doing cranking and I, it's amazing what, what can come out of those little simple sketches. I mean, a lot of those have turned into prints because it's like, okay, there's more there than just a sketch. Um, but it's, it's, it's fun to do, man. It's a great, and it's fun because that whole thing started, because it was just for me. All those sketches were just for me. I w the intention wasn't for me to do them and sell them. I was just playing with the whole retro look and the vintage vibe, you know. And so, so those we've already we've back. already established you as a character who's just in it for the money, Tarek. So now you're you're trying to change the narrative here. Give me that sweet money. <laughs> okay, everybody, turn off this damn thing. Go to DerekHart.com. <laughs> buy my art buy my overpriced do you um so when you're you're sitting there with your sketch pad and you're drawing these doodles are they mostly coming from your brain or are you like watching people at the dmv and you're kind of like oh no no yeah no it's from mm -hmm. my brain or it's from some silly thing i saw i mean i i'm a voracious consumer of vintage images you know and i've been collecting vintage images and you know started out you'd go to the, the flea market or the you know the, the thrift stores or whatever you know and find uh old books or old recipe books you know betty crocker recipe books with these great weird illustrations you know and the you know just simple that's where it started and i just started just collecting that that and jazz albums and just any album cover that had any of that 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 50s 60s cartoon art on it and I just started really, really just obsessing over that. So I've got these, I've always got images that I see that I get, and I still see stuff I've never seen before and I get excited about. Um, and so that's what, that's what creeps into my, that's what creeps into my sketches is those thoughts and those, oh, I thought I need to do something with, um, I don't know, a drunk, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, whatever. One out of every three. Derek Daniger <laughs> pieces featured some kind of drunk. <laughs> drunk. Awesome. It's a high percentage. Cheers. Sure. Yes. The Derek Hanager art role model for today's children. <laughs> well, speaking of books and children, uh, 
We got we got one here. Kitty cocktails. Kitty cocktails. You knew it was coming. Kitty cocktails. How did this come about? I love this idea, by the way. Well, this see there by Stuart Sandler, it says there. That's my business partner. So he had had this idea to do a you know a drink recipe book for kids, a cocktail book for kids. Um, and so he was hounding me for a couple of years to to illustrate it. And I was, you know, books are books take a long time, books take a lot of work. And so I finally said, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Cause I thought it was a cute idea and it was fun. Cause it's, you know, Roy Rogers and Shirley temples. It's all these, you know, um, but I honestly thought we were going to get protested. I was hoping we would like a, a bunch of, <laughs> you were hoping you would <laughs> well, I was hoping like a bunch of like, you know, maybe Christian, you know, people would be like, oh, this is unacceptable. It's pushing alcohol on the children. And, which is Garrett just, just wants to watch the world burn. Yeah, there's no such thing as bad press. So I was like, you know, we, we're going to sell a lot of books if that happens. But sadly, nobody seemed to have a problem with it. So <laughs> do you need me to do something? Nah, do you need me to send out letters to like every PTA association? And the it's too late, Gabe. It's too late. Too late. It's too late. Yeah. Yeah. If only it had come to me in the first place, I, yeah. I would have stirred up all the rebel rousers. Yeah. Uh, no, I, dude, I, I, I think it's a great thing because especially with Tiki bars, there's, you know, it's hard because they're immersive experiences. They're fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but oftentimes kids aren't necessarily allowed at Tiki bars, Yes, f you know, for valid reasons. But at the same time, like there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to enjoy the environment. Wow. Um, and also, you know, if you see your parents making cocktails and then every night you're told you can't have this. Oh, this is not for you. Yes. That kind of sucks. Well, and it's all, you know, too because i sell a lot to you know cats cats and kittens that are on the wagon you know that are like hey you know i don't i can't drink i don't drink and but this is a great way but they like the you know the ceremony of of, of making a cocktail you know of getting the ingredients and measuring and the whole the, you know being a mixed yep. i mean it's it's fun so so they like being a mad scientist yeah i get a lot of that <laughs> No, we won't was, we won't show too many of them because we want people to buy your book. That's uh, cool. But this is one of the cocktails, the Lava Flow. I think this is uh, probably one of my favorites that I've seen. Uh, but that you have mini prints on the website as well. Yep, we do. We do. There's one. And the Dream Sakura. Yeah. And the Little Pink Pearl. These are fun. Yeah, and my dream when I was younger, younger, young. Well, not younger, but when I was in college, now high school, college was to do children's books. I kind of thought, you know, uh, I really, that was what I wanted to do. Um, Where the Wild Things Are, you know, and uh, In the Night Kitchen, those books were just, oh. um, so it was kind of cool too. And that's one of the reasons also too, that I said, okay, I'll do it. Cause I kind of always wanted to do a children's book. So it's fun doing cute, cutesy, you know? Were you like an avid reader as a kid? While other people were playing on the playground, you're inside with your Animorph books. I was a comic book reader. I don't know if that's considered reading, but I, <laughs> there were words and I did read them. Uh, Somewhere but, between Moby Dick and being outside. Exactly. Yeah, the comic book reader. <laughs> werewolf, yeah, yeah. Werewolf at night, you know, whatever. Um, werewolf by night. That was the one I was obsessed with. But anyway, but yes, I was a comic book kid. And so I was doing a lot of, but I didn't, you know, and I read the books that they told me to read in school. You know, I read the books mom i read the books and uh but uh but no i was not i was i ever since i can remember i've been obsessed with visual images when okay. i was a little kid i remember being just obsessed with my and my mom and dad were kind of pack rats so they had a lot of stuff you know my mom had all these recipe books my dad had all these great jazz albums you know and i remember going through them and just i don't know if i was just locking it away i was soaking it up in my spongy brain um but all those images just they spoke to me and then then you know famous monsters magazine and mad magazine and cracked and rat fink and weirdos and all that stuff it just excited the hell out of me i still got, i'm getting a little getting a little whew. it's exciting i love all that stuff i love all that old vintage stuff and i just it was thrilling for me which is i think is why i finally ended up coming back to all of that because that's what that's where i kind of fell in love with art was all that all that silly crap you know garrett's coming back home 
Home to where it all started. I'm coming home. (laughs) Elizabeth, I'm coming to you. So we know you do Tiki art, but obviously 13 Nights of Tiki Frights. Uh, We also like the Halloween side of things. What was Halloween like? I got pumpkin in the background. You see my pumpkin back there? Yeah, we do. Pumpkin. Did you carve it yourself? No, you didn't carve that yourself. No. Do you carve Derek pumpkins? I I have carved yeah? pumpkins. It's been where a while. are those pictures? <laughs> You're not seeing those pictures. <laughs> oh come on! Your adult pumpkins. Oh, chicka chicka wow wow. Ooh. Wait, you mean the stuff that I've seen on DerekArt.com isn't as <laughs> bad as it gets? <laughs> you got to get into the back room. Oh, so you gotta get behind the curtain. Do you have a, an alias name that you are publishing all your really dirty findings under? Uh, uh, <laughs> Is it yeah, D- Big Dixie, Toe? Dixie Normus. Dixie Normus. <laughs> no, buck naked. Ay, 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 ay. I know. Slowly <laughs> deteriorate. <laughs> Things are falling apart. <laughs> all right. And with that note, let's go back to the cutesy stuff. Let's go back to the cutesy stuff. We got this new Halloween spooky print. Um, this just came out. That's brand spanking new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did that right mm-hmm. after the New England shakeup. And I was like, I want to do a Halloween piece, a classic. You know, yeah. It looks so good. It reminds me of like all the, the you must have just the Rolodex of like vintage stuff because this screams vintage Halloween masks and that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, 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 Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, it's a, the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, huge, huge influence on all of us. I mean, my God. So a lot of that, the kids walking with the, you know, the masks and the whole thing. That The ma- the whisk, the witch mask on the girl looks a lot like Lucy's uh, uh, witch mask that she wears in that, in the, uh, the great pumpkin. Ah. Uh-huh. There's, there's, that's all in there. That's all rolling around in so the, the key is to take and steal from all of these these poor dead artists and put my name on it and make it mine somehow. That's what we've learned. Without Derek, food. we thought was an artist, but he's really just, he finds, you know, pictures that are outdated. No one knows because they're from some Martha Stewart catalog yeah. and then he's it's tracing clip them. Art. It's all clip, clip art. art. <laughs> I'm not drawing anything in, since 1987. Hey, that just got released. Big eyes for little red. Big eyes for little red. So tell us about this one. What's the inspiration? Other than the, the well, audience? it's it's that that old Tex Avery stuff. Remember the old Tex Avery cartoons? There's the one which is a uh, little. Is it, what's it called? Little red. It's called Little Red or something. Anyway, but that was a big influence. Like all that kind of stuff. And I'd always wanted to do. I'd always wanted to do that with a little bit of a rockabilly twist. So that's where that came from. But um, he, he's one dapper looking wolf, isn't he? Sporty. Guy. My favorite part is the chain. I was just going to say, no, something <laughs> wrong here. This guy broke away from something. So I, I like the whole chain, that whole idea. Um, but this one I drew over and over and over. And it started out, whatever. It's, I, I could show you probably 15 different versions of that of pencil sketches of that for some reason i just couldn't and i couldn't and so then i had to shelve it i put it away for about a year and then i was kind of going through some old stuff and i pulled it out and i was like oh my god there's a lot there's a lot of life in this there's a lot here and then i did one final boom and it all came together and i was like okay i got it you make it look so easy and sometimes it's hard to know exactly sometimes how many iterations it's gone through Sometimes it is. Sometimes it just falls right out, you know, and then sometimes I got to really work the hell out of it. Um, And I'm so particular about every little piece. Every little thing has to be just and I tend to obsess. So so I I'll work it and I'll rework it and I'll rework it until I'm happy, you know. Um, And sometimes your mood, sometimes if you're having a crappy day, you know, sometimes that can mess it up and you got to get away from it and then come back when you're feeling better with fresh eyes and go, oh, okay. And then, or you'll see what was wrong with it. You'll go, oh, that's why you got to fix it. And then you go, and you fix it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a process. You know, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it ain't so easy. But when are you like, what's your environment where you're most creative? Are you doing it at night? Are you doing it during the day? Are you doing it in your office? Are you doing it outside? 
during the day, if the weather's nice, I love sitting outside on the, the, the porch and, and, and drawing. That's a, that's a hoop. I like doing that. But it's almost always in the studio. I have a drawing table that I that I stand. I always I always stand when I'm working um, because I kind of try to put my whole body into it as I'm drawing. You know, I want to really I don't know. I just I, it's, I do better when I stand um, during the day. Regular work hours, like when my wife gets home from work. Um, uh, you know, I quit, I clock out, you know, so I get up and I do my thing, my coffee, and I come over to the studio and I work, you know, all day. And then I clock out. I got a joke. I got a funny joke. So I, I hope it's better than Ken Ruzik's. It's, I was, uh, his was probably <laughs> filthy. <laughs> it was inappropriate. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Mine's not inappropriate. Mine's delightful. So, so I'm a real go-getter. You know me, I'm a real go-getter. My wife goes to work, at, and at 5.30, I go get her. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yuck, 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 <laughs> yuck. All right, maybe it's not that good. <laughs> it was less dirty. It wasn't filthy. I can yeah. tell you a filthy joke. That's for the other alias. Yeah. Oh, that's That's right. not supposed to come from Derek. Oh, I got one. I got one. No, this is, this, I'm not going to tell you much. You're not going to tell no, I will. Okay. How do you how do you how do you find uh, how do you find Will Smith in the snow? It's so obvious. You're gonna kick yourself that you didn't get it. Am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> you look for the fresh prints. Okay. Gold. That's, that's gold, good. Gary. That, that's gold. a good one. I like it. It's gold. All right. I'm that's gonna... the joke to beat. Ken Ruzik, you got to come back on here and uh, tell another joke. <laughs> Dethrone Derek Aniger. Kenny Ruzik. Kenny Ruzik. Love that cat. We got this one. The Deep Sea Rendezvous. Deep Sea Rendezvous. Yeah. That was actually the teaser art. Started out, I think I changed it a little bit. The teaser art for next year's Tiki Oasis hmm. is like an under the sea kind of theme. So you are doing the next Tiki Oasis. We can yeah, look still, forward to seeing Derek Yaniger art some more. Unless you've heard something. Have I been fired? I get my walking Oh, it does not like you, Derek. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that. That's good to hear. 20 years. It's crazy. It's crazy, right? Does it feel like it's been 20 years? Not really. No, I can't. I, it freaks me out a little bit. I can't. I don't know. It's just crazy. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about it, there? I know. <laughs> Lay down. Tell us how you're really feeling. Well, <laughs> I, have another cocktail. <laughs> That's what I need, actually. Oh, I do need to get a little more. A little more of this delicious plantation. Pineapple. Pineapple I had this at Trader Vix and I'd never had it before. And some and, and the, the cat at the Trader Vix goes, Oh, I got something you're gonna like. And he, he poured me one. Oh, change. Did you have a change? In Atlanta. Is that your go-to spot? Uh Trader Vix. Yeah. You got I mean, Trader Vix, you got SOS. Yeah, SOS. SOS, not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have some good drinks and all, but the decor is, it leaves a little to be desired. Uh, but no, Trader Vic's, we're damn lucky to have it because there's not many left. Um, and you know, it's not a freestanding structure because it's in the, it's in the, it's the, the restaurant for the, for the Hilton yep. uh, in Atlanta, the downtown Hilton. And so I, I think because of that, maybe that's why it's been protected and it's still there. Because, uh, you know, and there is a there is a street entrance. So there's a little bit of a, you know, they got a big tiki out there and it's nice, a big moa. But, uh, but yeah, I think that one, just because I've been there so many times and I'm familiar with it and I am thankful to have it. There's a land. I, I have to say, I have to say, you know, and I'm going to go on the record live here. So this right. is dangerous. Right. You know, people are going to cancel me, Derek. All right. I was at, I was at Trader cool. Vic's uh, at a table near you during a new Hale. It was my first time at Trader Vic's in Atlanta, and I have to say I was a little disappointed. Uh oh! But I, I love so I love Trader Vic's, but I was so excited I ordered the Suffering Bastard. Okay, 
Suffering Bastard. You go into Trader Vic's, first time Trader Vic's, you got to order the Suffering Bastard. So I get it and they bring it to me and it's like in a totally different glass. It is not the Suffering Bastard. It's something totally weird, which yeah. whatever. I was like, okay, they're probably out of Suffering Bastard cocktails. Yeah. And then my friend who was sitting next to me, he gets his cocktail totally different in the Suffering Bastard mode. Oh, okay. Well, and then it was just, you know, so my whole night is ruined. Anyway, Hale, you can't do it. No, nothing. You guys were the suffering bastards. See, that's, 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 it's, it's a thinker. See, they wanted to make you the suffering bastards. And then yep. when you got the bill, you were really <laughs> the suffering bastard. They, yeah. uh, maybe they saw me coming and they were like, yeah, no, not, <laughs> not tonight. Stand up the guy with the wrong mug. I avoid Trader Vic's at uh, Dragon Con, which is Dragon Con is massive, this comic convention. And it's like, I think, 90,000 people. I think it was like eight, this last one. And this is, you know, not not that post-COVID. Um, I think they had like 70,000 people at this thing, which is, yeah. So, but during those periods, Trader Vic's like makes their Mai Tais in a big bucket. <laughs> they make it a big, giant vat. They stir with a big stick, and it's terrible. It's not so. You do not want to go in there and order the the you know because they have to have it. They have to have, have you it. drawn? Have you drawn a Derek cartoon of that? I, I want to see like a I mixologist should. doing a giant bucket. It's not good. So yeah, you know, I that's, that's all we got. So I, maybe I, just I, when I, you go I, during an event, go with you know. Low expectations. I've always said the, the secret yeah. to life is, or the secret to success is low expectations. Yeah. You'll never <laughs> yeah. yeah. Set the bar low and you'll always hit it. That's my <laughs> motto for 13 nights of Tiki Frights too. <laughs> Keep your expectations low and you'll never be sad. Mm -hmm. This looks like that degenerate uh, Big Toe has taken over the stream. He says, as hey. I recall, we were drinking plantation pineapple together when we got tossed out. That's when I had the first, my first plantation was with Mr. Toe. Mr. At the Toe. end, I guess, yeah. And now you're hooked. I love Mr. Toe. Hey, he's he's all right. Very he's talented. All right. He's talented. Don't, give, don't give him too much credit, Derek. Come on, he's talented. You got to give no. him. Even, no, every, even everything. FBI, he's still really talented. Everything he sells is one less thing people can buy from you. You got to remember this, Derek. Oh, you're the money he's man. He's my competition. Yep. Throw him under the bus. I can't like him anymore. Nope. You're dead to me. You're dead to me, Toe. I should type that in the little chat. We got this one. Wahini Island. Yep. Yep. Wahini yep. Island. Was this for Tiki Oasis or was this unrelated no, to Tiki Oasis? No, that was a that was a painting I did for a gallery show. I can't remember what show it was. Uh it was either Outre in Australia or La Fiambrera in uh madrid but i i don't remember but i think it was it doesn't matter so doesn't matter <laughs> i turned it in so i turned it into a print because i thought hey that's kind of cute looks great i got another print here i think we should do a giveaway because we're we have exceeded an hour so let's do a giveaway we're going to give away uh two things in one file swoop we're going to give away this kim bang swizzle stick if you're not following kim bang follow kim bang she creates these awesome, uh, this one is a spider web and with a little spider hanging off. And we're also going to give away some cocktail umbrellas from the tiny umbrella. If I can get it to focus, maybe. Technology is our friend, Derek. Hell of a prize. Isn't. Yeah, give up. That ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the question. Uh, I have another piece uh, from Derek in my collection. What is the name of this piece? Don't say it, Derek. Don't say the name. I almost did. I know you did. Um, can't trust you. You nah. can't trust you. So first person in the comments to say the name of this piece. Um, Wait, I'm a little fuzzy. Yeah, I, remember. I got it now. You got it now? And I was looking at my website the other day, and I've got like, I have like 160 prints on the website. How is that possible? It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it is. It's too much. Yeah, it is. Another shameless plug. Christmas .com. Christmas is coming. <laughs> right around the corner. You gotta scratch them gimme gimmies off my off your list. That's how you do it. 
Hey, um, so I think we have the right. I think we have the right answer. Do you remember what it is? Me? Yeah, you. I do. You do? I do. I think I know what it is. But now I'm questioning myself. I think it. Uh, too many prints. This one right here. Is that correct? Yes, you are correct, my friend. Okay. So you we want do... a brand new car. Woohoo! Uh, I don't know if they're spelling it wrong or if I'm spelling it wrong, but we did get the correct answer. And it. Uh, da -da -da -da. I misspelled T. Cam. Cam. So congratulations, Cam. Uh, you have won a Kim Bang school yeah, stick and some cocktail umbrellas. Uh, I don't know your last name, so send me a message uh, via email admin at searchfortiki.com to claim your prize. I'll need your mailing address. Woo! 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 Boom. And with that said, dude, it's been great talking to you. It's been great talking to you, Gabe. Thanks for inviting me. I got to know. Your hospitality. Eh, it hasn't been that great. Let's be real. It's been good. My, my, been I good. didn't get any hang I got that one weird hang up at the beginning, but otherwise, smooth. Smooth sailing. You got that right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Before we give this away, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Glamour ghoul. Very good. Um, what's next for Derek Anniger? What's next for me? Uh... I've got a gallery gig at this the gallery that I that I was talking about earlier, La Fiambrera, which is in Madrid. Super swell, sweet, beautiful people. Um, I've done a couple of shows in the past with these cats. Um, so it's that. It's paintings, 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 new stuff. Design new stuff. A lot of that new stuff will be paintings and prints and Versa Visa and, you know. Uh, and so we got to get you – some time to do those sketches for Holden at Tiki Farm. So I don't know. Maybe we need to cancel Inuhele and sit you down in a room. Well, uh, don't tell Jonathan. But I don't, know. don't tell Jonathan. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> put you in the basement below Trader Vic's. <laughs> that wouldn't be. That'd be okay. I'll be all right with that. I Have you seen it? Time. My quiet time. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's been a pleasure, my friend. It's been a pleasure. All the, well, not all, but most of the stuff that we've seen tonight, you can find on DerekArt.com if it's not sold out. This Plantation room has been a pleasure. You, not so much. This, it's not so much. <laughs> I'm a little more tolerable with the plantation room. Yeah, yeah. That's all it takes. All right, guys. This mug, the Glamour Ghoul, Gore Edition, uh, was created by uh, Mike Biggs, who's an artist in Vegas, super talented artist. He goes by Big Studio on Instagram. Give him a follow. Um, fantastic work here. We're going to give it away. Uh, our mug uh, sponsors are Plantation Rum and also Tiki Farm. Holden and our friends at Tiki Farm, who are the world's largest manufacturer of tiki mugs. You said two things. Are they really the world's largest manufacturer of tiki mugs? They must be, aren't they? Yeah, as far they as are. I know. Damn. And... The fact that Tiki Oasis is the biggest Tiki event in the world? I guess it as is. As far as I know. Damn. All right. You're making me question things, but I'm not, I'm not aware of anything, anyone larger. That just makes me look good. You know? Maybe yeah. because of me. Maybe I'm the reason. You're the secret sauce, Derek? I don't know. Possible, right? I'm not saying. I'm just I mean, po possible, but is it probable? No, no, <laughs> no, it's not. All right. And with that said, Derek, let's announce the winner. The winner to this mug, cheers, is Samantha Wallace. Thank you so much to everyone who entered and said shameless good things about me to try to swindle me into giving you this mug. Uh, I do super appreciate all the love and comments that you guys gave. Uh, but Samantha Wallace is going to be taking home the Glamour Ghoul. Congratulations, Samantha Wallace. And with that said, dude, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I've been a fan of your art for years. Um, and, you know, now I've gotten to chat with you for over an hour, other than just, you know, chucking stuff at you across the room from uh, Trader Vicks. Yeah, thanks so, for that. Thanks. And, guys, respect. go buy some stuff. Derek, DerekArt.com. You got it. See you later, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Much love.